Hello everyone, Power Query Basic. Today we will talk about the basic calculations in Power Query. First of all, we have to define the columns as date. Select the columns, click this icon, then select date. There we go. We have the column of date, then we can apply different calculations or transformations on the column. We may do it under the tab of transform, right there, date, we can calculate age, get the year portion, month, quarter, week, day, earliest, and latest. I'm going to show you one by one what they do in Power Query. Instead of doing this under the tab of transform, I'm going to do the demonstration under the tab of Add Column. Here we have the same set of calculations. The only difference is between doing it under Transform or under Add Column is whether you want your result to be presented in another column. If we are doing it under the tab of Transform, then the result will be displayed on the same column. You are actually changing the content of a column. But I want to show you the impact, the effect. So it's better to show you on an additional column. Let's do the first age. So when I select the column and then go to add column, date, age, you can imagine it will compare the date versus the local time. This is called date time dot local now. Basically, just today okay but you may say oh what is it actually the result will turn is the duration this is the duration of 9567 date 0 hour 0 minute and 0 second well normally we do not want the result like this so we can do another transformation here go to the duration, we can convert it back into total years, total days, total hours, total minutes, or total seconds. As simple as that. Let me show you. But instead of adding a column, I want to do this kind of transformation under transform because I don't want additional column this time. So under transform column, duration, I want to see the total years. There we go. Basically, it divides the total duration by 365. Let me remove the step. Let's try another one. Total days. We have it. We can also have the total hours, total minutes, or total seconds. Let me do it. Total hours. This is the total hours. However, let me show you something. If you select the first one, hours basically this is the hour portion of the duration and we can see that here is zero so i will expect it will return zero yes it is so this is the major difference between the hour here and the total hours if you want the duration in terms of hour see that this one rather than this one make sense this one year go to the add column tab date let's see what we have we can get the year portion very straightforward let's try another one now i want to get the start of the year the start of the year of course that is uh first of january so you can expect what will the result for the end of the year end of the year December 31st very straightforward but one thing I want to highlight here to draw your attention is let me remove the step even the first step of change types when we have the time portion here say for example let me define it as date time when we have the time portion here go to date year start of year will still return the same result that you expect 
no problem at all. However, if you go to the start date with the time portion, and then you go to date, year, end of years, wait, it will return the first day of the next year at midnight. What happened? This is kind of tricky <laughs> yeah, because this, when we convert it just to date, just get the date portion, date. Indeed, that is the last date of the same year. So this is something you need to pay attention to when you try to get the end of the year using the power query. Make sure you will have the date column defined first. Let's see the month. We can extract the month of the date. It's very simple. And also the start of the month, the first date of the month, or the last date of the month, date, month, end of the month. Very straightforward. No formula at all. Just click this and click that. Let's see the rest of the options we have under month. We have the days in month. That means how many days we have in that month. Cool. The final one is the name, the name of the month. Okay, the name of the month. Easy, straightforward. Okay, what about you want to have the abbreviation, the short month name? We can do it by transform and then we can go to extract get the first three letters the first three letters there we go for quarter let's see it's very straightforward we can get the quarter of the year based on the calendar year now get the start of the quarter wow and then the end of the quarter. No formulation required, just click. Okay, now let me show you the week, but before I'm going to do so, let me get the day of the week first. Let me get the name of the day, okay? Also remove this to make it clear. So this date is a Monday. Okay, this day is a Sunday. Let's try to see what it will come out to get the week of the year. Wow, apparently it is a correct number. Let's also try the week of the month. Wow, it's super easy, super straight. However, I do not use these two options most of the time. I'm not saying Power Query is not returning the correct result, but when we talk about week, actually it is not that straightforward or not intuitive. What do I mean? So for example, this one, this is the second date of September. So you expect it to be the first week in the month. Makes perfect sense. Take a look at this one. The sixth of August, it returned 2. Normally, you would expect the result to be 1 because that falls into the first 7 days. But actually, the counting doesn't start with the 1st of August. And also, take a look at this example. 11, this is the 11th day of January. You expect the result to be two, maybe, right? But take a look. The result is three. Indeed, it is correct. But the counting logic is not what seems so straightforward. So unless you are super clear of what you want, then feel free to use these two options. Otherwise, think about it. Let me show you the other two that I think more reliable or more frequent used by myself at least. So which is the start of the week and also the end of the week. I love these two options very much because it gives me a good 
and very convenient way to get the start and the end of the week. Having said that, pay attention to, to the day it returned. Depends on your regions, depends on the regional settings or depends on your uh, where you're coming from. You may expect Monday is the first day of the week and Sunday as the last day of the week. In my current setting, oh, we can see that, okay, this is Monday. The first date of the week is interpreted as Sunday and the end of the week is interpreted as Saturday. The good news is we have some options to tell Power Query what is the starting date of the week. So, for example, let me go back to this step, insert start of the week. Okay. Go to the formula. In case you did not see the formula bar, go to the fill formula bar here, make sure it is checked. Okay, now let me go back to this formula. We can add an optional parameter here to identify what is the first day of week. Type day dot, and then we can specify whether the start day is Monday, Friday, Saturday, Tuesday, any day. So let's start with Monday. Okay, as simple as that. But bear in mind that if you want the start of the week and end of the week at the same time that follow the same logic, make the same adjustment to both columns. Otherwise, you are having a very funny result. Okay, so day dot, what did we choose? Monday, yes. There we go. Day. We can get the day portion, very straightforward, the day portion of the date or the day of the year, day, uh, day of the week first. It will return from a zero to six. So zero is the starting date. By default, it is Sunday, but similar to, to what we did for the week, before we can specify the start date, the first day of the week here. I can say, for example, I would like to make Monday is the first day. Then we will have Monday marked as zero, while Sunday is marked as six. The next one, date, day, we can have the day of the year and day of the week. Day of the year is very straightforward. It just comes from the first date of the year, starting from 1st of January. There we go, we have it. So to make sure it doesn't have the impact of Sunday or Monday, because we are not talking about week, we are talking about year. Let's do some testing. I will get the start of the year and the end of the year. For this column, if I add a column of day of the year, then I will have one for sure. But for the end of the year, if I go to the day of the year here, I may get the result of 366 or 365 depends on the year, whether it is a leap year or not. Very cool. Finally, let me show you this. They are for the start of the day and end of the day. Because we do not have the time portion, basically they will return exactly the same result here. End of the day. You can see they are exactly the same. Okay, so let me show the final one of the day, which is name of the day, which I did it before. Again, if you want to get the short name, you can further transform it by getting the first three letters. Okay, now let's do some 
simple calculation between two columns of date. The most simple one is calculating the difference or the number of dates between two dates. Select the end date first, followed by the start date by holding the control key. Go to the date, subtract dates. As simple as that. Here come the final two options, the earliest and the latest. Wow, how come I don't have the options here? It is grayed out. Because I am under the add columns here, and I am selecting only a single column. When I have only a single column, I have to go to the transform here. And then date, I can see the earliest and the latest. So basically, it will return a single value based on the selected column to return the first date and the last date in that column. Let's have a look, earliest. It returned a singular value here. Going back, let's see the transform. Now let's try the latest. Also a singular value giving me the maximum date under that column. When I have two columns selected, or even more than two columns, multiple date columns selected, now I can go to add column date, and then I can select earliest. The result returned is actually based on the two columns selected. And then it is evaluated row by row and returned the earliest date. We can do exactly the same for latest. Let's try it. See, again, it returned the latest date based on the two columns selected. So far, I have introduced what kind of calculation we can do via the user interface in Power Query Editor. That cover many, many scenarios, but indeed, there are more. If you Google about date function in Power Query, and then go to the Microsoft Learn page here, we will see a list of date-related functions. Wow. So many, so many. Actually, they are very powerful. They will give you the power to manipulate your date in Power Query. When you are ready to create your custom function or custom column with a function, come back to this page and try to learn more. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Mm -hmm.